K-means clustering is a popular centroid-based clustering algorithm. In K-means clustering, K refers to the number of cluster centers. And here is how it works. You start with K initial random points, called centroids. You assign each data point to a cluster by finding its closest centroid. You then update the centroids. And this is done by recalculating each centroid's location as the mean of all the points assigned to its cluster. You then repeat steps two through four until the centroids stop moving or until the points stop switching clusters. It's important to note is that there are a number of techniques for choosing the initial points in step one. And the k-means plus plus algorithm, which scikit-learn uses by default, makes the initial centroids a bit more smartly selected. Let's now visually see how this works. I'm specifying three clusters. And I should note that the color of the data points represents a cluster to which they've been assigned. The larger circles are the cluster centroids with their color indicating the cluster that they represent. And for illustrative purposes, the shaded subregions are depending on what cluster they're closest to. This is also called a Renoi diagram. I'm updating my centroids. I'm reassigning points. And if you look at this part of the image, you see that it has some blue right next to this green. And then when I reassign points, everything over here is green. I'm then going to update my centroids. And then this moved over here. If I keep going, the points and the centroids won't update their position. So I'll stop the algorithm. Now back to the notebook. As usual, you have to import the libraries that you want to use. In this notebook, we'll use the iris data set. I'm plotting two features, in this case the sepal length and the petal length. And I'm doing this so I can get a rough estimate of how many clusters I want to specify for k-means later on. One thing I want to mention is that in this iris data set, we have four features, but we're only graphing information from two of the features right now. We could try to visualize multiple of the features against each other, and we can do this by using a pair plot. This can take a second. Keep in mind that it would be nice to be able to visualize more than two features on one plot. The k-means algorithm, like a lot of different algorithms, can behave badly if the individual features do not more or less look like a normal distribution. You can standardize features by removing the mean and scaling to unit variance. Here's a formula of how to do it. And in the code below, we're using something called standard scalar to accomplish this. The image below shows a data frame of a similar iris data set. And on the right shows that data set after standardization. Let's now cluster our data using k-means, specifically k-means with three clusters. So we're specifying n clusters equals three. We're making an instance of our model. We're fitting our model on our scaled data. The next step is we're getting our labels for our clusters and we're assigning it to a variable called labels. We're then getting our cluster centers, in other words, our centroids, and assigning it to our variable centroids. From here, we're putting our scaled data into a pandas data frame. We're next gonna visualize our clusters from the k-means algorithm. What this graph is showing is a different color for a different cluster. You could also plot the centroids 
the centroids in this case are these x's. And this graph below is just showing the clusters as well as the different flower species. It looks like our k-means algorithm picked up flower differences with only two features and not the labels. As you can see in the left graph, we have a red color here, and we clearly have all the same points for this red color over here. One thing to point out is that the colors for the graph on the left and the colors for the graph on the right are a little bit different. We have a blue on the graph on the left, and we have a green on the graph on the right. And these colors are different because the k means algorithm gives out an arbitrary cluster number, and the iris data set, when we loaded it, has an arbitrary number for a different flower species. This next bit of code computes a silhouette score for your clusters. And there are many different approaches for metrics for clustering. The silhouette coefficient gives a score for each sample individually. And at the high level, this is comparing the point's cohesion to its cluster against its separation from the nearest other cluster. And ideally, you want the point to be very nearby other points in its own cluster and very far away from points in the nearest other cluster. And to get a score for all clusters, rather than for a single point, we average over all points to judge the cluster algorithm. So one thing we've mentioned is that a lot of times people use an algorithm and assume it works under all circumstances, but this isn't the case. And the gift below shows an ideal case of k-means. This next section is going to show you different issues they can have with your clustering. And for this, we're going to create data. And this code may look a little bit complicated, but we're just using this for illustrative purposes. We have data set one and data set two. One big issue with k-means is that it's sensitive to starting position of the center clusters as each method converges to a local optima and the frequency of which is higher in higher dimensions. As you see in the GIF, it looks like the algorithm is not finding the appropriate cluster centers. And while this is easy to tell in two dimensions, it gets considerably more difficult if you're visualizing more than two dimensions of your data at once. Luckily, k-means clustering in scikit-learn mitigates this problem as it oftentimes prevents the algorithm from returning suboptimal clusters. In short, scikit-learn's version of the algorithm reruns the algorithm with n different initializations and returns the best output. One potentially problematic assumption of the k-means algorithm is that the user specified k is a correct number of clusters. And while this may seem obvious, choosing k can actually be difficult sometimes. And as far as how you choose k, it's not always a simple task because sometimes an application is an important consideration. So for doing customer segmentation, we oftentimes want clusters that are large enough to be targetable by let's say a marketing team. And in that case, even if the most natural looking clusters are small, we may try to group several of them so that it makes financial sense to target those groups. As you see in the image below, it looks like there's three distinct clusters and the algorithm did its best with k equals two. Another assumption of using the k-means algorithm is that the data is circular or has a spherical distribution. 
and also that the clusters are roughly the same size. And in the images below, K-means seems to perform pretty well on dataset 1, but really doesn't do too well on dataset 2. And these examples just illustrate that the algorithm itself seeks and identifies globular, really spherical clusters. And if this assumption doesn't hold, the model output may not be adequate. Another assumption of the k-means algorithm is that the variance is the same for each variable. In the image below, we have some clusters that are more densely packed and some that aren't. And the algorithm doesn't work as well if the variance is different. So just keep it in mind. For all these potential drawbacks of k-means, k-means is extremely popular and this is usually due to its versatility and the fact that it's one of the fastest clustering algorithms. And as we're getting more and more data as time goes by, this tends to matter a lot more.